Hey, welcome to Caching in the Northwest. This is the only podcast dedicated to geocaching in the great Pacific Northwest. Now, it's Thursday at 9 p.m., and that's sometimes hard to say, especially at 9 p.m., but I'm Chris of the Northwest, and we're going to talk about geocaches and geocachers from here and all around the globe. So while you're helping Portland find their missing pickle, hmm. we'll be caching in the Northwest. That's right. And tonight we're talking about our missing monkey. Ooh. Actually, we're not going to talk about him because he's not here. He's off on assignment somewhere. But so let's talk about that, him. anything that goes sideways or awry tonight. Well, it's his fault because he's not here to defend himself. So okay. there. And if you're wondering about that Portland pickle, well, the Portland pickles need your help finding their stolen mascot. Dylan T. Pickle. Do you think T stands for the? Could be. Dylan hmm. the Pickle. And, you know, it's a stretch, but I think. Or it could be Trevor. That. Could be. Yeah, could be Tiberius, but I doubt it. Ooh. Yes, we don't relish telling you this, but it's kind of a big deal. The Portland Pickles baseball team says their beloved mascot, Dylan T. Pickle, has been stolen and are seeking the public's help in bringing him home safely. As the days passed, the team put out multiple APBs, which we assume is All Pickles Bulletin. They shared missing posters and called for help across social media. So that was the news story that Chris of the Northwest found this week to share with y'all. This is what happens when we have no monkey to keep us on the rails. Oh, who are we kidding? We never stay on the rails, even with a monkey. My interest is peaked. A missing pickle? There you go. Yeah, it's apparently yes. part of a Portland baseball team. They They're are in a pickle, pickle until, they, until find they find him. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Chris had a picture earlier of said pickle, but I don't know how because he's missing. So, Maybe. yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, how do you lose like an eight foot pickle? I, I would have trouble. Let's see. Oh, wait. I have a pickle. Hang on. I forgot all about my pickle here. Uh, how many? How many more times could I have? There you go. It's my yodeling pickle. Go ahead, everybody, get out your yodeling pickles. <laughs> Let's have a yodeling oh, pickle party. No, okay. It's not a yodeling okay. pickle party tonight. It's an archive party tonight that we're going to chat about. And we want to hear from all of both of you. Well, there's more than two. All three of you in the chat. There's a few. Now look at that. That chat is active. Wow, I hadn't looked over there for a while. Maybe it's more active without a monkey. We'll find out. Mm. But there is a comment. Well, this go ahead. You want to read that comment? I don't know who this. What are we, this is in, in regards to last week's episode. Last week's episode. So we got several YouTube comments. One of them comes from Heather. It says, "I really enjoyed this edition. I live in Beaverton, but our two older daughters live in Seattle. We all stayed at an Airbnb in Paradise. The rest of them are Muggles, but my husband had accompanied me for several of the nearest caches." I read about that earth cast just in preparation, but I didn't get to go there. Ah, well, the only podcast host that'd be truly disappointed in you isn't here tonight. The rest of us will just say earth caches. That's too much like schoolwork or homework or work. homework. Yeah. DNF the earth caches. Cause it's too much work. It's all good. We can say that tonight cause nobody's here to argue. That's right. So anyway, thank you for the YouTube comments. I just want to let you know we get them from time to time. And I'm going to share them with you just to remember that you can post comments on YouTube if you like as well. Or, you know, subscribe, ring the bell. I don't know what the bell does. I think it warns you if new episodes are there. But you know they're coming every Thursday night at 9 p.m. There's That's no right. question there. Yeah. Yeah, you know, if you like something about the show or don't like something, just... Mm -hmm. Bleep bloop that down there in the in the comments of YouTube, and uh, and he'll see it over there. Oh, how, over how, there that way. How, you just bleep you bloop it. it. You, you bleep bloop it right down there. Okay. All right. Well, hey, wow. we do get comments every week, and we do appreciate all of the comments. But you know who else we also appreciate? Uh, we appreciate the support of our patrons who help to keep this podcast coming each and every week. We thank. Would like to thank. Land Sharks, they are our corporate Denali level sponsors. You can check out everything they have to offer at landsharks with a Z dot C A. 
And we'd also like to thank our other corporate Den- Denali level sponsor. That would be Gold Country Geotourism. You can visit exploregoldcountry.com to learn more about the Geotour and the entire Gold Country region. Remember to try and figure out where Darcy is. If you're right, could get warm cookies and a foot rub. Just saying, maybe. That's you know, maybe, maybe. You could get a smack in the back of the head like my mother used to give me often. <laughs> it's hard to say. But check you out that one, though. exploregoldcountry.com or facebook.com slash exploregoldcountry. And if you want to know more about supporting this show, click the Patreon link on the cachingnw.com a website. And it's time for a glow, but I completely forgot about it. Hmm. So I've got one right here that Wits End will absolutely have to cold read. There's not a chance. Cannot verify that there's one right there. I do not see. Oh, it just popped in. You know, wow. You may ask what the glow is. I might ask. And if I did, I would say, what's the glow? Why? The glow is the geocaching log of the week. Whether you read it, or have not read it and are going to cold read it in a few moments or whether you've wrote it, we want to hear about it because great logs simply make geocaching better. You can send an email or a recording to feedback at geocaching dot or feedback at caching and w.com. Are you Sometimes. sure? You no, know, not always. Okay. Feedback at caching and w.com. You can call into two, five, three, six, nine, three T F T C and show us just how you glow. Thank you so much that it's up on the screen because I have trouble just reading that sometimes. And you would think as many times as I've done this about 445 other times, roughly you'd get that pretty close folks. This is live podcast. You just want to let you know live episode tonight. We don't correct any of the mistakes. Uh, you know, just wait till well, next week. It'll be better or not. I, I know about always looking to the next time because I'm a Mariner mm-hmm. fan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so this week's glow was logged by Frisbeer. And uh, I don't know where it's from because I don't see a GC code, but that might pop up here while I'm reading. It says this was the grand finale for Mag Tangle and me. We've talked about it for weeks as a goal for the Washington History Challenge. On such a beautiful day and getting a late start, parking was almost non-existent with the only spot available in the overflow lot. After finding the trailhead cache, we successfully found the two trail caches along the way to bolster our confidence. There was quite a crowd of hikers going both ways, which we expected. The trail is especially rocky after making the switchback turn, which is 0.26 miles as the crow flies to the summit. Once we got to within 60 feet of ground zero, we followed the hint and with excellent coordinates made a quick find. The cache was exposed with a few rocks and sticks covering the plastic ammo can. We added a few more, but the location is pretty obvious. There were lots of hikers of all ages scattered around the summit, enjoying the views. We snapped some pictures and then headed down. Thanks so much for keeping this oldie alive for 20 years. So I don't know what the cache name or GC code was, but it's an old cache. Yeah, that's right. It starts with GC, something or another. Wow, that narrows it down. Yeah, I can help with that. Um, you know, I think this was forwarded to me, and that wasn't included, and I didn't ah. notice that. Well, you know what? I bet there's a few people in the research department out there that could probably Google and find Frisbeer's log and tell us exactly when that was found and where and all that, all that stuff. So if you're driving in the freeway and wondering, um, don't pull over and check right this second because it might not be there yet, but it'll be there soon. Yeah. Yeah. I, if you're driving down the freeway and listening to the show, we don't want you as part of our research department at this time. No, please. No. We, we prefer our research department stationary in front of a computer. Yes. could be on a phone. I don't care whatever internet enabled device you have. Yeah. You focus Thank on you. the road if you're driving. All right. Well, how would people chat with us tonight? How would we find those comments? Maybe they should mark them somehow. That would be genius. You know what? Let's use 
what the commoner people, the common people use these days, a hashtag. An octothorpe? Octothorpe, yes. Pound sign? Yes. Number? Yes. Let use the know. hashtag archive to bring up questions for tonight's show. And of course, please, we implore you. Have you been implored lately? Mm. We implore you to use the hashtag FITAS to bring up something for the after show. Look at this. Just this Ryling right guy, he knows what he's doing. Oh, we should get in touch with him. Mm -hmm. What Coaster wants to know is, was there a postmark on the email to Ooh. show where it was from? Yeah, it was uh, 173.62.5. Two nine dot eighty seven. That's a valid IP address. <laughs> it's it's not actually. Okay. Oh no, you're right. <laughs> it's a I, I, it, I it's that. like a television sitcom IP address yes. or television drama IP address. Got to throw one octet in that's way out of range, so nobody could ever go to a real address. At any rate, is there any news this week? I don't know, but there's a hashtag oct octothorpe from. Oh, I love it gas station tuna yes we have some news <laughs> wow hashtag brylang is the best mm. where did that come from you know Make we appreciate you we appreciate you brylang but don't let it go to your head that's right pretty soon his headphones won't fit anymore mm, that's over right. a swollen head hey we told you last week we warned you that the leaderboard is changing and it's done just that it's been reset to reach the final peak which is Everest. You can hmm. earn the Everest Base Camp and the Everest Summit Souvenir before time runs out on Monday, March 7th. That's coming up quickly. That's at noon UTC, wherever UTC is. Mm -hmm. It's like 4 p.m. local, I think, ish. There you go. Um, a Found It log gets you 425 points and earns you the Base Camp Souvenir. Uh, found It with 15 or more favorite points is 800 points a multi-cache is 850 an adventure if you complete it no matter how many stages uh 975 points a mystery cache 900 points wow a letterbox hybrid 700 an earth cache a mere 650 and each stage or each location in an adventure 125 points they're just throwing that in for bonus Bonus. Bonuses are good. Because if you mm -hmm. don't complete those by March 7th, your score will reset to zero. Or as I like to refer to it, wit's end. Oh. Like what my score is now? Mine too, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. One one of one of the three of us caches and he's not here. There was an intrepid cacher that I met for lunch this week that has is already the... gained the Everett Everest oh. <laughs> Summit. Do tell. And the bonus souvenir of, uh, you know, um, peak performer, I think it's called. Okay. With uh, all seven peaks on there. So fantastic. That wasn't yeah. me. Oh. Who did I have lunch with then? It wasn't me. Okay. Who was that? Don't know, but I like lunch. And you would have liked where we went. I'm sure. Yeah. So it was MC3 Cats. I'm just throwing it out there. Oh, oh, what a great guy. Look at that. There you go. Peach of Washington. Who's I in Las Vegas. That. I know. Yeah. Who knows where she is? She's rare. Peach of rarely in Washington. I've already received both the Everest and the Peak Performer. Nice. Well done. All you great cashier people out there. Mm -hmm. You're awesome. I'm not. Other news is from Rock Chalk. We know him. He's been here. He's been a guest. He likes to roll in at 8.59 and 59 seconds <laughs> or something like that. What does he say? Today, as the year of the hide continues, we have announced the launch of Virtual Rewards 3.0. An opt-in web page is now available for about 50,000 geocachers who meet the criteria to apply for a virtual reward. The page is open until February 26th, 2022. That's, well, that's just a couple of weeks away. Yeah, that's a pretty short people. time frame. 
So you can submit your request by February 26th. And who knows, you might get a virtual reward. That's 3.0. You only get one. Yeah. Even though it's 3.0. Yeah, that's true. Now, to be eligible, you do have to meet some criteria. Uh, That is, you did not receive a previous virtual reward. You must own at least two active non-event geocaches. You must own at least one geocache or event published within the past four years. If you're struggling with the math, that's from February 8th of 2018 to February 8th of 2022 when this note was published. Mm. And you must have posted a log on a geocache within the past six months. Oh, and for quality's sake, your owned geocaches must have at least 20 total favorite points. So I think I might qualify if I, with like one of those categories, but if I have to do all of them, I'm out. Oh, you think so? Okay. But hey, so that, you there's know, lots they, of great people that that qualify. So get your application in. About you fifty thousand of them. Yeah. And they're only giving away four thousand virtual rewards. Okay. So if you do the math, not everybody's getting one. That's right. That's how I do the math. Yeah. So there All you right. go. Yeah, station tune says I opted in and expect nothing. Oh, you, you know, know what? The, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Set the expectations low. You might be surprised. That's right. MC3 Cat says opt in and opt in often. That's right. Opt often. I, I don't know how you do that. <laughs> Look at all these people that have opted in. Yeah. Darren. Uh, um, come on. Seabeck Tribe. <laughs> <laughs> suddenly it's just one of those things i don't know Ryling's not op- ed- eligible to opt in we'll keep him around anyway okay so one other thing for news there's this is a newsy kind of show one other thing for news is Cito season 20 22 technically season one mm. uh, starts march 1st through Tuesday, May 31st. So okay. there's a whole bunch of time there. You can earn, earn a souvenir for hosting or attending any CETO event during the season. Okay, so this is not a CETO 3.0, but that is a three-month span that you could oh. earn that reward. Yeah, I'm seeing a trend. People listening to the audio podcast aren't seeing the trend, but they're hearing it. Oh, they're hearing it. Okay. In case you need to know, CETOs are neato. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. While you're at your CETO, you could eat a burrito. Oh, and some Cheetos? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Doritos? Fritos. Wrap it up, and I think we're done with news. (laughs) Oh, hey. We are here to talk about an archive party. Now, if you're a newer listener, even if you're an older listener, we don't care your age. If you're a listener for any length of time on this podcast, you've heard us talk about archive parties. It's been mentioned a time or two. Yes. We did an archive party Mm -hmm. live on air. Not knowing what goes on behind the scenes when you do an archive party. What, you may ask, is an archive party? What is an archive party? Man, you are so good. You're on it tonight. I like you. I'm going to keep you around. (sighs) Okay. (laughs) I was worried for a moment. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to double your salary, too. Oh, wow. So generous. Um, Land Monkey, who's not here to defend himself. So let's talk about Land Monkey. It's his fault. Whatever it is, it's his fault. Decided it was time to archive one of his caches. Yes. And I think I made the comment of, I've never posted a needs archived log. Because go ahead, post it on mine. I don't care. I'm going to archive it anyway. And we opened it up and we had several, several of our listeners jump in and posted a needs archived log on this land monkey geocache. And after, I don't know, let's say 10, 12. There were a posts, few. Yeah, there were a few. The, uh, the geocache was locked. And no more. 
Yeah, we did this live but on a didn't... Thursday night. It was during the after show, as I recall. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was live. So if you listened to that episode at any point after the fact, you didn't have an opportunity to participate in the archive party. But you probably got maybe hopefully got a kick out of it and enjoyed something anyway. So. What we didn't realize is that reviewers get needs archive notices yeah. in real time. So every time you do a needs archived, a reviewer gets an email. And so the reviewer, you know, suddenly bombarded with emails, decided this doesn't seem right. I'm just going to go ahead and lock that cache. Something weird is going on. Yeah. Well, it's Thursday night at nine. There's always something weird going on at that hour. But yeah, something was odd with that cache. And while our podcast listeners and archive party participants enjoyed it i'm not so sure the reviewer did we didn't set out to irritate and uh mm -mm. reviewer it just kind of happened so and it's just part of our gifting yeah yeah we're working with our giftings yeah, yeah. we feel so, slightly bad but maybe not it's a running joke on this podcast about an archive party right we've done it there's the reason behind it mm-hmm Starcaster says every is that like every time a bell rings? Uh it's it it's similar mm -hmm. but but different. It's the same but oh. different. MC3 Cat says, is that irritation by ignorance? Yes, uh, definitely. Maybe not by ignorance, but yeah. Anyway. Yeah, we, we didn't know. Um anyway. We're sorry. Yes, we are. Archive party, it was fun once. Don't do one. Yeah. But here we're to talk about when should we archive a geocache? That's right. Because despite bad monkey behavior, everything tonight is blamed on the monkey. Oh, Archiving yes. your caches is, it, well, it's something to consider. Geocaches, like just about everything else, they have a lifespan. Mm -hmm. And that that can vary wildly from region to region or from, you know, seasons or containers or any number of reasons uh, unless there's something particularly unique about your cache like you know project ape uh, something like that the majority uh, of one you know of the usual local cachers they found it they're done and then it's gonna kind of just stagnate so mm -hmm. maybe it's time to refresh things it can be very refreshing now, oh, yeah. there are some geocaches to keep, right? If you've yeah. got a unique um, difficulty terrain combination that fits into some challenge very nicely. Yeah, fizzy grid. Or if it's a very old cache. Yeah. Right? You know what? That's worth keeping around as well. So you you have to weigh the options. You know, if people stop finding it, does it go missing all the time? Has the landscaping crew removed it several times and you know what you probably shouldn't annoy them either yeah <laughs> yeah uh, i know the cache no. that one of my caches that i archived was in a tree that no longer exists well i mean the atoms must exist in the space-time continuum but it's no longer a tree mm. in fact where it was planted is not even uh, dirt it's asphalt it, and curb now so yeah you can't see the dirt anymore no so no. when is a tree no longer a tree it's always a tree somewhere, somehow. It's just now a, a tree kit. Oh, yeah. Some assembly, Some assembly required. required. Yeah. yeah. A lot of glue. A lot of patience. Of so you mentioned seasons. We mentioned region by region. But what are some good reasons to not archive, to maybe keep a geocache in play, mm -hmm. keep it active? There's that fizzy grid and special difficulty rating. But I suggest perhaps even a, a gadget cache or something that's really mm -hmm. creative and unique about the container itself or the hide. Those that's right. Really so, special. Yeah, it could be part of a series. Another good reason, yeah. You know, that's a reason to keep it going. Um, you're still getting finds and favorite points on it. You know what? It's an active cache. People still enjoy it. 
Oh, I got to throw that one up there. Here you go. A tree is not a tree when it leaves. Thank you, Komakino. I feel like I should just drop my mic now and walk away. <laughs> I would, but mine's on the stand. Mine too. Okay, continuing on. I lifted it up and it stays there. I can't I can't drop my mic. <laughs> well played, sir. Dun, dun, dun. Um I don't kn- <laughs> I don't know um why there there are some reasons, you know, the cache is worthy to be there. But there are others, you know, that cache hasn't been found in a month, two months, three months. And it's not because of snow or weather. It's just time. You know what? Mm-hmm. Everybody in the area has found it. And you maybe it's say time. It's time? To... I'm saying it's time. We didn't have a lot of fun in the desert. Never mind. So what time. do you what do you think some signals are? It's time to archive your cache. Well, you mentioned find frequency, favorite point frequency. I have a cache. It's still active and I'm still getting fines on it, but I've considered archiving it because there's just really nothing special about it. Mm -hmm. It's just your standard run of the mill hide in the city, urban hide. It gets a fine now and then. So people are still, you know, actively finding it. And, uh, but if I had a, another cache that was more creative or if I felt like I needed to open the location up to something else, if nobody found it for months and months, I might just say, you know what? It's time. It's, mm-hmm. it's run its course. Maybe this one should just be put to bed and let somebody else enjoy hiding because it is fun to create and hide caches as well as finding them because if nobody hid them, nobody could find them. Yep. Yeah. Um, in the chat, GSM times two says archive it when you can set something better. Yes. All right. Carlos tosses in archive when you replace the container three times within one year. Mm-hmm. That, that says something's not right there. I have one and, that I replaced twice in a year, but it was part of a series and I kept it going. Mm-hmm. So CRS 98 says other reasons not to archive a cache challenges, which can't be put out again under current guidelines, mm. but something that is still well liked by the geocaching community. I'm yeah. thinking like a webcam would be a good thing to not archive. Ooh, right. But if the webcam goes down or disappears or breaks, you know what? It's time to archive the cache. It's time to pay some local resident to put up a webcam is what it's time for (laughs) and modify do not archive the webcam cache there you go you you go out and buy a webcam and drop it on their door and said hey would you put that in the window please yes Uh uh-huh true okay so webcams are bad 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 example to uh webcams are not bad webcams are fun webcams are a bad choice to archive thank you Yes, bad choice to archive. That's what I was trying to go for. And I didn't finish my thought. It sounded better in my head. Um, it usually does. But let's say you've got just, you know, your your regular old, I don't know if they're out there much anymore, film canisters, right? A little water gets in there from time to time. Mm, you know, it's sitting in a guardrail. It's fine. But people aren't finding it. Yeah, time to get rid of it. Or there's construction. Right, you can't get to it anymore. Yeah, sometimes the like, like the men- the one I mentioned of mine, the location just physically isn't there anymore. Mm-hmm. They they the business that was there sold. They came through, removed all the trees, planters, buildings, parking lot, everything, down to bare dirt. Built an entire new shopping center with an entire different layout, and so it was kind of an obvious choice to just archive that one you mean they tore down paradise and put up a parking lot pretty much well yeah. no it really wasn't paradise paradise was where one of our youtube commenters visited with their family and they didn't go for the earth cache and so that's okay by me you know i didn't know there were airbnbs up on paradise i'm gonna have to go look at that yeah 
Wouldn't that be something to stay up there? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, on purpose. It's yeah. not something to stay up there if you don't mean to. No, that's yeah. that's that's bad. I've camped up there. There's a hotel up there. Isn't there a lodge up there? Anyway, I digress. Yeah. We're not but talking not about that. You, that was yeah, last you, week's episode. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'll stop. Um, now, how do you go about actually archiving a geocache? Do you know? Have you ar You have archived one. You you come on to caching in the Northwest Thursday night at nine p.m. and you put it in the chat that you would like to arc. No, that's not how it's done. That's oh. not how it's done at all. I'm getting a couple of thumbs down from our, our chat lackey. You can do all kinds of things from the cash owner dashboard. Did you know about the cash owner dashboard? I love the it, cash owner dashboard. It's a real thing. That, I love that change that they've made on the website. You don't see it on the phones. You have to go to the website. Yeah. This is found on the new dashboard experience. So if you're still using the old, decrepit, saggy, rusty, crusty dashboard experience That's get off of that one where you can yeah. see the foam underneath get rid of oh, that dashboard. the the rusty holes when you can see the street going by underneath your feet <laughs> it's time to retire that one archive that dashboard so to speak get on the new dashboard experience on that in the left nav panel below statistics souvenirs etc under geocaches you can click the cache owner dashboard you can get a quick visual of which of your caches need maintenance or are disabled, even ones that are unpublished. They're just waiting to be discovered for you to publish them. It shows the most recent logs on your caches. It, there's all kinds of amazing information there. It is a very handy tool for checking if you need to do some maintenance on a cache or ultimately consider archiving a cache. It's, very it's time has come. Star Casher says, archive when the landowner time limit expires. Some oh. park districts have a one or two year limit on their geocaching permits. Our metro parks have a two calendar year limit. Hmm. Guess what? I didn't know about this. I didn't either. And is that considered sequential or can you only count the days when it was found? So you've got oh. 730 some 40 days. No, that's not right. <sighs> Oh, let's see. Dora Moore says, I had to archive a puzzle cache that can no longer be solved the way it was intended. That's something I hadn't considered, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, I love it. Yeah, yeah sometimes the location of the final itself is fine, but stages of the multi or uh, things needed to complete the puzzle mm -hmm. are not available anymore. Carlos Toss in... Um, I archived a multicache because the final container was a 3D mm. printed cryptex and I couldn't buy it again. Yeah, that falls under that unique container, unique item. How would you find those? Well, I know a friend with a 3D, 3D printer that if you could come up with a Thingiverse recipe, it could be recreated, but... Ooh. And you have to neek up on it. Now, so... You're going to go through your, hold on, I have to toss this out, from Bryling, the hmm. Dash Owner Cash Board. I don't know what that's like. I have no cash. Oh, never mind that. Um, the, now he's, now I've, now it's got me. The Cash Owner Dashboard. Mm -hmm. uh, Mission accomplished, Bryling. <laughs> Bryling's a little too happy about that. Bryling, stop it. Stop it. Bad boy. Bad boy. Go sit in the corner. Okay. Uh, you're going to go there. You're going to disable your cache. Or I'm sorry. You're going to archive your cache. And that's all well and good. That gets rid of the listing. People can no longer go in and log it. I believe. Is that right? Can people still log an archived cache? I believe they can. If you know what you're looking for. Um, but it keeps it out of the listings. Right. But there's one other point, one key point. Go get that container if it's still mm. out there or any of the waypoints. If it's a multi, go pick up all your stuff that you left out there. Yeah. Now I have heard stories. Oh, yes. Even I think here on this very podcast of caches that were archived 
because of, say, some natural disaster. A flood came. A landslide, a mudslide came. The terrain changed dramatically. The terrain, the location was no longer recognizable. Mm -hmm. The container was, as far as we know, gone for all of history. And then years later, turned up. <laughs> so that happens, but... Miles downstream. Sometimes they're just feet below mud. Mm -hmm. But if you do know where it is and you have control of the location and that's not a consideration, yes, by all means, go retrieve that container so there's no remnants left, no evidence that it was ever there. Clean up after yourself, maybe even... See, tow some other debris out with it and leave Very things nice. nicer than the way you found them. That would make my mother happy. Wouldn't it though? My mother yeah. as well. Um, I went with a cash owner that had uh, at least one cash on this forest road. Um, and that road was going to be out of commission for at least a year while it was being upgraded, regraded, you know, maintenance. So he went and got his cash and several others along that road. We went out on a trip and picked them all up and brought them back with us. So, you know what? Go get your stuff. Even if yeah. you think, well, it'll just get buried. Nobody will ever know. Yeah. yeah don't don't do know. it. Yeah. Yeah. And don't archive the ape cash by throwing it over the cliff because... Somebody will go back and find it months later. That's right. You know those people. Um, You've interviewed the way, those people. Yes, that's right. Uh, you can go log the archived cache if you have the code. If you have I the knew code. that. I knew that. But suddenly, you know, when I'm talking yeah. live here, my yeah, brain doesn't work. They're a little harder to find to search mm -hmm. for them. But if you know the GC code. I, and, uh, yeah. I believe the term zombie cache comes into play. Where people enjoy going after archived caches. If not, it should. Because it's a good term. So what if uh, you've archived? Oh, go ahead. Read that oh, one. Oh, I was going to say, GSM Times 2 says, Lots of picture puzzle caches should be archived because photo hosting companies stop sharing photos to a third oh, party. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes, I remember that well. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, you've now archived your cache. You've picked up your container. You've maybe cleaned up a little trash. You have a decision to make. Are you going to reuse that location for a new, greater cache? Or just make it available to someone else? What would you do? You know, it depends on the location, right? Sure. Is is it a good location and not a great cache? You know, has, yeah. has it changed slightly, rendering it even more, more interesting? interesting? You don't know. It's possible. Um, it's possible. So I would, I would be of the mind to put out a replacement cache, not not a direct replacement. Let's modify it a bit, and make it a yeah. fun new find for people. Maybe a mob cache. Yes. Maybe the final of a multi. Maybe a really cool gadget cache. Yes. You know, even not of a so cool of a gadget cache, I still enjoy them. Yeah. Just saying, I, I enjoy a gadget cash. It doesn't have to be super cool. You know, it doesn't, you don't have to go play Plinko, but it helps. Yeah. Um, let's see. Iham says I had an archive one this week. Cool container was cleared by landscaping. Part oh, of the I series and the final was also archived, so I didn't uh, build it again. I know that pain. Mm-hmm. What else we have in here? I saw the a whole conversation one back there that I've I've missed now, but I'm sure it'll come up soon. And it's a good suggestion from Brylang there to uh, let the reviewer handle talking to the cash owner. If you see something that mm -hmm. needs to be archived, you don't necessarily go have to approach the cash owner yourself. You can let the reviewer. Do the dirty work. That's what they get paid. That's what they hmm. let them do it. Let them do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what uh, I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, uh, Brylang also says archi archived caches should be removed. You may not know the reason 
why it was archived. Perhaps it was private property issue with an angry landowner or what have you. Theoretically speaking, that never really happens, does it? No. But no. if you get one that's been archived, just go deal with it. Yeah. Right? You don't have to have a whole thing. I like that, uh, oh, that, well, I like that I have said many years ago, archive one had gone missing. Later, caching in the same area, months later, stumbled across the missing container 20 meters away in the brambles where it was thrown. Hmm. How do you know thrown? Uh, well, toss me, is what it said <laughs> on the container. Oh, okay. I was going to say that uh, Komokino was interesting. He said, track down an archived cache by looking through the logbook and finding cashers' names. I looked up their names and cache finds to find the cache page for the archived cache. So that was a lot of work and creative and well done, sir. That is a very good detective story. Yeah. But uh, that's that's not easy. Now, I know I've, I've found an archived cache, right? Um, out. I was traveling with my parents. I don't remember what state I was in. And I like, that'd be a spot for a cache. And I go lift it up. Sure enough, it was a lamppost. Lift it up. Sure enough, there it is. Sign the log. And I get back in the car and I'm like, um, there's no cash there. <laughs> what did I that's, just find? I had to go back think. and had to go back and look at the log, which had the luckily had the GC code on it. That helps. Mm -hmm. Unlike the glow log tonight, which, cash. I still don't know where that was, but Maybe. What are you trying to say? Hmm. Can't Come on, show up. spit it out. You're trying to say something. Hmm. Did it get in your eye? If your archived cache <laughs> container gets buried, says Star Cacher, some archaeologist in a couple thousand years may eventually log it as a find. It could happen. You think that's what archaeologists are doing, looking for cache containers? It could happen. I'm going to be, probably be around then. I'll let you know. Okay. You're, you're very well preserved. Ah, huh. an archaeologist will attach a religious meaning to the container. That's not too far from the truth. <laughs> hmm. Maybe. Yes. I've know. often wondered about archaeologists thousands of years from now finding the foundations of our homes and finding concrete vaults in the backyards that surely must contain all sorts of treasures. Yes. There was exactly. even pipes connected from the house to send the treasures out underground to them. It must be for airflow. They yes. Put the pipes in there. Why else would they? Yes. I, I don't know. Let's go ex excavate the vault and find out what's inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a very toot uncommon. <laughs> okay. You've got to take the rest of the show. You just won the internet tonight. Okay. A local cashier archived a number of his caches on popular trails. He gave us a month's notice. So we could go find them if we wanted before they were gone. And that's a nice thing to do. I That reminds me of the trip that you described where the cashier, cash owner said, hey, they're going to do some work on this road. All of this is going to be inaccessible for a significant period of time. I'm going to go pick them all up. If you want to come with me, you can log them all as we make the hike. And that was cool. Might cost, you a, yeah, might cost you a wet iPhone, but it's worth it. Is it? That didn't bother me any. It's worth it for me for you to drown your phone. Yeah, it was worth it. Thanks. Th <laughs> thanks for bringing up that memory. It's just theoretically. Tom Aquino wants a rim shot. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, two drums and a cymbal fall off a cliff. Okay. Bring us back on track, sir. Oh, I don't know if I can. Oh, so. Go archive your caches, all of them. No, archive the ones that need to be archived. If they're damaged, if nobody's finding them anymore, let's refresh the game board. Yeah. Let's put out new caches. You can keep the spot. <clears throat> I'm all choked up about this. I can tell. Um, you can keep the spot. That's okay. Put something else there. And you know what? We'll go out and find it again. Yes. Refresh Trust all me. the things. All the things. Yeah. Except the really old ones and the really good ones and all the highly favorited ones. Yeah. And if, you know, we pick up that container like we talked about, unless, of course, like I Ham's, the first one he ever archived was not recovered because it got bulldozed under several feet of dirt. Right. And yours got put into a 
chipper. Yeah, I'm pretty sure mine got put into a wood chipper. Because before they eliminated said tree, they limbed up those trees. And I looked over one time and went, ooh, yeah, pretty sure it went through a wood chipper. Oh, well. Uh, let's see. MC3 Cat says, unlisted caches that remain in place. I found one that was too close to a rail line that was never listed. The owner never went back to mm. pick it up. Bad owner. Yeah, I'm thinking you don't get credit for that find either. That's not a category that's on your statistics dashboard. I don't, if, if you, <laughs> okay, any reviewers out there listening, if you have a GC code for a cache that never was actually published, you can't log it. That's, it that's was, completely unloggable. If it was never published, does it have a GC code? Yes. Mm. <laughs> they all have a GC code, whether they get published or not, as soon as the listing is created. It was kind of a tree falling in the forest question, but yes. Oh. Um, GSM times two says a local national forest requested that all caches in the wilderness area be archived. Hundreds of them were archived. We did go out and retrieve most of them. Well done. Good geocacher. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Udax says, oh man, I just realized I need to check on a cache that may be missing. <laughs> There you go. So archive your caches if they need it. We're not saying archive everything. We're saying archive not all the things, some of the things. That refresh need to be all the archived. things. And go and refresh your caches. Yeah. Just, you know, you can keep and, even the same hiding spot. Put out a new cache because people we, like the new things. We do not officially condone throwing an archive party here on a podcast episode, though it has been done. We are a good, bad example. <laughs> Don't be like us. Learn from our experience. Mm -hmm. You see Chris in Wits End? Don't be Chris in Wits End. No. Yeah, there's plenty of them in the world already. One. That's too many. That's right. Well, not too many. That's probably just the right amount. That's all the world needs. Folks, thank you for taking the time to tune in and listen to us tonight. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Caching in the Northwest. And of course, we want to uh, take a moment and thank Land Sharks and Gold Country Geotourism, our corporate Denali level sponsor. Land Sharks is the outdoor adventure and geocaching store. Check them out online because they ship online orders daily. And for amazing geocaching adventures, check out exploregoldcountry.com and see if you can figure out where Darcy is because she's out and about mm. taking pictures and you just never know where you're going to find her and you may get warm cookies and a foot rub or you may not you may not it's hard to say no. whatever you get let us know call in to 253-693-TFTC tell us what darcy gave you if it can be discussed oh. in mixed company <laughs> We also, of course, want to thank all of our faithful Denali-level supporters. That's Land Sharks, Gold Country Geotours, Team Squirrel, Groovy Owl, and Cashly. If you want to know more about supporting the show, click the Patreon link on the CachingNW.com website. No hesitation there at all. Oh, man. You could say it like that? You know, can. LG9000 says it like that. And Sega Hove. What about Boomer365? Team Noltex. Lunchman, MC3 Cats. Ala Rubric. Kennel Barb. Genies. You Talks, Two Rocks. Green Words. Kitty Claps. Hacker Duck. Sprouter. Wino Seattle. B Pendragon. Log Work. Limax. Skyhawker. S oh, Seabeck Tribe. Trexer. I like that update. Keats, 94. Gas Station Tuna. Subway Mark. Hemnerf. Geo Nav Pros. Dora Moore. Chick Magnet. On a Boat. Wet Coaster. Fairwood West. Antaeus. Camp Clan. Ari, 54321. Oh. GSM times two. Three hams and a rose. The Geo Travelers.
just finding our way. Donners. Broncos fan for life. Coors Gut. CRS 98. Peach of Nevada, Washington. <laughs> Kid Vegas 19. You deck. T Sayer. Gav Mac D. That's right. <sighs> hey. Yes. It's time. Just about. I'm going to toss it out there. This this might be an awkward last question. But this is a question. This is a segment. Hmm. That we ask questions in and we like to call it last or listeners ask some things. If you'd like to ask some things, you can call into 253-693-TFTC or email your question to feedback at cashingnw.com. I just wanted to pr prove that I can learn and I can say things right the first time. Eventually. Hmm. So we're coming up on Valentine's Day. So, do you have a most memorable Valentine's Day? 2022. Oh, yes. Nice. And you? Oh, okay. thank you. That was an awkward silence. You know, um, the, the one that I, I constantly tell my wife about is before we were married before we were even dating she gave me a valentine's on valentine's day and i'm like oh, why would she do that she didn't give anybody else one she why would she give you one just... and uh you know and then i chased her until she let me catch her that's right that's how it's done <laughs> right i chased her until she caught me there you go um there you go so that was my most memorable one but what about that, you? That's right. And don't forget, guys, Valentine's Day this year, it's the day right after Super Bowl Sunday or the big game Sunday or Superb Owl Sunday, whatever you want to call it. So don't get so tied up in the game and the horrible hip-hop halftime show that you forget to get out and get a gift. You could probably go out on Monday morning and buy a loser football jersey. It's a thing. They should be cheap. They should be. Get them before they send them off to Africa. Yeah. But whatever you do, make it special. My wife and I have typically not gone out to find a restaurant on Valentine's Day because the crowds are crazy. But we always celebrate somewhere around there. I can't mm -hmm. say one of them in specific stands out in my memory as more memorable than any other, but... That's why I say 2022, because this next one, well, it'll be the best one, because it's the most close to current time. That's right. Um, nice. Nice. Uh, I should, I, in the past, I've given my wife roses while she's at work. She's a school teacher. So, you know, you walk in with a bunch of roses and all the kids go, oh. Especially the girls. And and the boys, they're younger. So yeah. it's just like, oh, look. And oh, uh, oh that's yeah. right. She doesn't teach high school. No. Okay. Oh, that's a fatass. We can't show that yet. Don't, don't, don't stop the video. If, don't go if, back if, and look. That's right. If you saw that, wipe it from your memory. We'll come back to it. Uh, folks, we want to say thank you for taking the time to listen to this episode of Cashing in the Northwest. Your support helps keep the quality shows coming. If you like the show, click the Patreon link on the CashingNW.com website. Now, if you didn't like the show, sorry. Let us know what you want us to talk about. In either case, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, so much more. Subscribe and give us a review. Yeah, reviews are nice. Even at just a you know, a thumbs up, a like. You can call into 253-693-TFTC and leave a comment, ask a question, or sew us up a pickle costume any time of the day or night. And of course, you can email us at feedback at cashingnw.com. Join us live every Thursday at 9 p.m. Pacific for live show and often livelier chat. 
This show is produced by Chris Umfenauer and Jim Paul Woods and Jay Kennedy. It's licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Copyright 2022 by Chris Umfenauer. And folks, I ask you to stay tuned for The After Show. Is that your pickle? I I can't say what I want to say. Mm-hmm. I just can't say it. So, we do have some fatas, and we need to know what your hashtag podcast baking tonight, because today was National Cream Cheese Brownie Day, says mm-hmm. Dora Moore. I did some pre-podcast baking. They were delicious. And it sounds like they're gone. Yeah, well, she does refer to the brownies in the past tense. So mm-hmm. one could assume they were gone. That's a shame. I didn't know there was a National Cream Cheese Brownie Day. Yesterday was National Pizza Day, and I didn't have pizza either. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm just apparently not in touch with the National Food Days, but I need to. I mean, we eat every day so there's you know um we have one of the uh speaker home automation devices i won't say which particular one but you know what i'm talking about you ask them questions while referring to them by a certain name um and my son loves the check a day will tell you what all the you oh check a day okay yeah uh you know so hey device ask check a day for you know, what, what today is. And they'll come up with a dozen different, oh, mm-hmm. it's, you know, National Pet Your Dog Backwards Day or whatever. Hey, Sriracha, tell me the hot spicy day. Yeah. No, that's different. <sighs> okay. What? Why do you look at me that way? CRS 98 says, I'm taking the day off tomorrow to go caching and place my adventure lab. Good well for you. You know what? I bet you can get enough points to reach the peak in just a single day. I would suggest you go for mysteries. Maybe they're challenge caches and a couple of uh, multi caches. I have that on, on good measure that it works. See if you can get 17 webcams. Those don't count. But But see if you can get them. I don't think there are 17 webcams in the state. Hmm. I don't. Hmm. I think they were down to like 200 webcams in the country. They're an endangered species. Yeah, they are. So go out and put. Oh, wait, you can't. Never mind. So, folks, thanks for joining us. And until next week. Get out. Find out what national food day it is. Eat some food and get caching in the Northwest.